Hey y'all, today we're gonna be making homemade sourdough bread. Now, I know this was a thing a couple of years ago when the world fell apart, but if some of y'all know, I'm a nurse, I was working, <laughs> so I didn't get to jump on the sourdough bread train, so I'm a little late to the party, but I showed up fashionably late, y'all. So we're gonna get our bread made. So the first day, it's a two-day process, the first day we're gonna take our sourdough starter and y'all, if you don't know how to make sourdough starter or if you're interested in how to make the sourdough starter, I made my own and I will do a video for y'all if y'all want to see that. Just let me know down in the comments. So what we're going to do is measure out about a half a cup or 120 grams of our starter. Now I figured this out. It took me a couple of months before I was ready to show y'all this video <laughs> because I did a lot of trial and error. Now look, see that starter that's left in that jar? Don't throw that away. Put that back in your refrigerator. That stuff will keep for years and years, okay, as long as we take care of it. But like I said, what worked the best for me was measuring everything. Now, if you can't measure everything or you don't want to, you don't have to. Just get your measurements as precise as you can to make your bread turn out good. So to our starter, we're going to add one and a third cup or 310 milliliters of warm filtered water. Now you can buy filtered water or you can use whatever filtered water if it comes out of your faucet filtered. I have a filter in, you know, on my refrigerator, you know, on the water thing on my refrigerator. So that's what I used. I put it in there and I put it in that con a container and I let it sit on my counter and come to room temperature. Now you want to warm your water up just a little bit. You want it to be about 90 degrees. And I think I pop mine in the, re the, the refrigerator, the microwave for like 30 second intervals until you get your water to about 90 degrees. If it's too hot, it's going to kill your yeast. If it's not warm enough, it's not going to activate your yeast. Okay. So once we get our starter and our water in our bowl, we're going to mix it up real good. And I'm just, y'all saw, I was just using, um, a dough whisk. I find that that mixes it so much better. It's so much easier to mix with that thing. I'll link it down below. I got all the bread making stuff that I'm using. I got from Amazon. I'll link it down below for y'all. If anybody's interested, you certainly don't have to have any of the things, but since I got started making it and I just really enjoy it, I thought, you know what, if I'm going to be making it a lot, I might as well get the stuff to, you know, make it with. So anyway, to our water and starter, we're going to add four cups plus two tablespoons of flour or 500 grams. And of course, like I said, I'm measuring it out and I'm using unbleached all-purpose flour. Like I said, I did a whole lot of trial and error. I baked a lot of bread with a lot of different recipes, with a lot of different ingredients. This is what worked the best for me. So you're going to go ahead and measure that out. If you use bread flour, it works, to me, it works the best, but unbleached all-purpose flour also works really good. Regular all-purpose flour worked okay too, but I think I was still kind of in the middle of trying to figure everything out, and so I don't know if it was the flour or a different recipe that didn't work for me, but this is what I ended up going with. So then we're gonna add two teaspoons of fine sea salt, now be very careful with the salt because if you have a super fine salt, you may wanna use a little bit less because obviously you can get more into your teaspoon if that makes sense. And you don't want super salty bread. So once we get all of our ingredients into our bowl, we're gonna go ahead and mix it up. Now, don't do this with a, a stand mixer or anything like that, you don't need that. This is not going to mix in completely at this point. We're going to mix this until we get a shaggy dough. So we're still going to have a little bit of flour, you know, a little bit of loose flour, a little bit of, you know, flour around the edges of our bowl. It's not going to be a super wet dough, okay? It's still going to be a little bit on the dry side. So just mix it until it comes together. We're going to do some things that are going to make the dough less dry. Y'all know I'm not going to use the word if I can help it, but we're going to figure out some ways to make it less dry. Okay. So you're just going to mix that up with your, now, like I said, you can use a spoon, a fork, a wooden spoon, whatever you have, use it, but see how the dough looks like it's not completely together. Still got some loose flour in there. That's perfectly fine. That's okay. So what you're going to do at this point is wet a kitchen towel 
and we're gonna cover our bowl with this wet kitchen towel and we're gonna let this sit on our counter for an hour, okay? This first day of doing your bread is a lot of little steps, but it, they're very quick steps. It looks like a lot, but it really doesn't take that long. It just, it's over, you know, a few hours, but the actual process doesn't take very long. So once it's sat for an hour, you can see it's still kind of flaky and, you know, floury and loose. We're gonna take a little bit of that filtered water and put it in a bowl. Then we're gonna get our hands up underneath that dough and we're gonna pull it up and we're gonna fold it over. This is what you call stretch and fold, okay? So we're gonna do that. We're gonna turn the bowl four times. So we're gonna pull it up and fold it over. Turn your bowl. Okay, so this is number three. Dip your hands in between because like I said, the flour is gonna be really dry. I mean, your dough is gonna be really dry. So just kind of wet your hands so it's easier for you to deal with and then it gives a little bit of moisture to your dough. So here we are on fold number four. So we're gonna fold that up, just pull it up, stretch it. I mean, don't have to, you know, stretch it to the moon, but just kind of pull it up, fold it over, and then that's it. We're gonna put the towel on this and we're gonna let it sit for 20 minutes. Now we're gonna do this four times, okay? That was number one. And each time you do it, I left it in the video so you can see each time that we do this, how different the dough looks. So this is stretch number two. See how the dough's really starting to get smooth and, and soft looking? So that's number two. We're gonna cover it back up, let it sit 20 minutes. Here we are at fold number three. See how, more, how much more pliable that dough is looking? It's really starting to look like some bread dough. So that's number three right there. Cover it up, let it sit 20 minutes. Come back and this is number four. So this is our last stretch and fold. See how stretchy and good that dough looks? So once you get that last stretch done, we're gonna cover it back up, let it sit for the last 20 minutes. Then we're gonna uncover it. Okay, so now we're ready for our first big rise. Okay, we're just gonna get a clean bowl out or you can leave it in your dirty bowl if you want to. But just kinda, you know, damp your hand, dampen your hands if you need to. See how it was a little bit stuck? I had to kinda fool with it to get it out of there. But we know it's gonna be sticky and that's fine. So I just kind of put it into a little bit of a ball. You don't have to worry about really, really shaping it or anything. And you can see I still had a few little dry pieces here and there, you know, just kind of stuck in there. So we're gonna put that in that bowl, cover it with a dry towel, and we're gonna let that sit on the counter just at room temperature for about six hours, okay? Six to 12, I, I've done all of mine for six. If you need to leave it a little longer, it'll be fine. You see how that dough has pretty much doubled See how, you know, big it's gotten? You can see bubbles on there and stuff. That is exactly what we want. Press into your dough, and if it mostly springs back out like that, then your dough's ready, okay? And look right there. I wanted to show y'all, look at those big bubbles down there in our dough. That is perfect. That's what we want. So at this point, like I said, it's still a little sticky. You're going to take a spatula or a little whatever that's called. If it ain't called a spatula, that's what I call it. Dip it into your filtered water and then just scrape down, kind of push down the sides of your bowl so you'll be able to get your dough out without like tearing it, okay? So y'all know I got this darn tile countertop. So we're just going to put it on this little plastic, um, this little plastic thing that came from, I think, the Dollar Tree. So we're going to pick up our dough. See how, how loose and just, you know, it's just like very dough looking. It's very doughish, y'all. <laughs> So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put a little bit of flour. We're done with water now. Put your water up. Put a little bit, now look, do as I say, not as I do. A little bit of flour, y'all, not the whole bag. Look at me having to knock that darn flour off of there. <laughs> but you're just gonna wanna flour it a little bit because we're gonna flip it over and we don't want it to keep just sticking to everything, okay? So a little bit of flour right there on top of your dough and then just pull it up off of your surface. And if you're lucky enough to have a smooth surface, then you won't have to worry about dealing with this little piece of plastic, okay? Just pick it up off of whatever surface you're using and we're gonna flip it over to where our floured side is down, okay? And once we do that, do not put flour on the back because what we're gonna do here is we're gonna pinch this together into like if you were making dinner rolls. You know how you just kind of pinch them together and form them into a ball? That's exactly what we're doing right here. 
So you're just going to pinch it together, form it into a little ball, pinch it together as good as you can. Put a little bit of flour on there because we're going to flip it back over now and we don't want this bottom part to stick. So flip it over and then we're going to start shaping this into a dough ball. Now, if you have a regular counter that you can use, you can kind of pull it, see like right there, pull it towards you, but it wouldn't work for me on this. So what I did, if you can tell, is I'm kind of getting my hands underneath that dough ball as I spin it. And as I do that, it's tightening that dough ball up, okay? So, I mean, you don't want it super tight, but you want it to be formed like a good shape. So now we're gonna put it in our bowl. Now this is a bread bowl, and if you don't have one of these, it's okay. You can use a regular glass bowl or plastic bowl, whatever you have with a kitchen towel. Just don't use like terry cloth or anything. Make it a smooth towel. And you're gonna wanna flour that really good because you don't want your bread to stick to it because we're gonna put this in the refrigerator overnight, okay? So once you got your basket all floured or your bowl, you're gonna pick this up and see those big bubbles? That is sourdough heaven, honey. So we're just gonna flip this pretty side down into our bowl and then we are going to um, just make sure you see you pinch it together because I had a little bit of extra flour and mine was not wanting to stick exactly right there, but it doesn't, it doesn't make any difference in the long run. So if it, yours is kind of coming apart like mine, don't freak out. So then you're gonna cover this with just a little towel and then I wrapped mine in plastic wrap, the whole thing. Put it in the refrigerator overnight, 12 to 36 hours, okay? However long you need to. At this point, when you first bring it out of the refrigerator, you're gonna wanna let this sit on the counter for about an hour. Turn your oven on 450, put your Dutch oven in there with the lid on and let your Dutch oven preheat at 450 degrees for an hour while your dough is coming to room temperature, okay? Then we're gonna take a piece of parchment paper and put it over our dough. And just be careful when you're pulling that, either the bread basket or your towel off. And then we're gonna score it because that just kinda lets the dough um, puff up and rise a little better. So score it with your razor blade or a knife, whatever you have. Then we're gonna take our Dutch oven out of our oven. And remember y'all, this is at 450 degrees. It is hot, so be very, very careful. Take the lid off, take your bread and plop it down in there with your parchment paper. And we're using the parchment paper because that's gonna be easier for you to handle, okay? I also sat my Dutch oven on a cookie sheet in my oven and it helped to me, helped keep from uh, my bottom getting too, too brown, okay? but you can do that if you want to. We're gonna put that in there for 30 minutes, y'all. When you pull it out, this is what it looks like. It looks like bread, but it's not browned. Back in the oven for another 25 to 30 minutes until it's nice and golden brown. So covered for 30, uncovered for 25 to 30. And when you take it out and uncover it, drop your temperature to 400 degrees. So 450 covered for 30 minutes and then 400 uncovered for 25 to 30. And be careful because did you see my parchment paper ripped right there? So just be careful. You're gonna take your bread, put it on a wire rack and let it sit there until it cools completely. If you cut it while it's warm, it's gonna be gummy. So let it cool for a couple of hours completely. And this is what you have. Look at that y'all, sourdough bread. It's so exciting. And I actually baked two loaves this day. That's why you see the two different, um, the way that it looks like the holes in my bread, the crumb, I think it's called. And this is what the bottom looks like, see? It's gonna be nice and hard and your top is super crusty. Your bread is fluffy and soft. Y'all, this stuff is so dang good. It is so dang good. And make sure you come back to the next video on Wednesday because I'm gonna show y'all what I made with this sourdough bread. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm drooling just thinking about it. But anyway, it's super, super soft. And y'all, sourdough bread is good for you. It has a lower glycemic index, so it will not spike like blood sugar if you have issues with blood sugar and stuff. And because it takes such a long time to ferment when you're making like your starter and stuff, it's way easier to digest. So just a couple of positives for sourdough bread. And of course it tastes really good. You know, you know what I'm saying? So, but this is it y'all. Look how stinking good this looks. I was so dang proud of myself. <laughs> 
but this you see this piece right here that that's on the screen how it's like got the round holes that was another loaf that i made the same day so it just if it comes out with round holes or if it comes out with these long holes like the loaf that you know that you saw me cook it's okay it's fine it, they were both fine they both tasted delicious they may just look a little different and that's okay because everybody's bread is not gonna be exactly the same but y'all this stuff is delicious and i was so excited that i finally was able to make my own bread and i just had to share it with y'all you may have seen this a hundred times you may not want to make your own bread but if you do try this recipe because it turned out so good Okay, I'm going to pop y'all another video right over here, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Bye, y'all.